the grand opening of the highly anticipated Greenstone Gold Mine. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A big celebration in Geraldton today as Equinox Gold hosted dignitaries and members of the surrounding communities to mark the official opening of the Greenstone Gold Mine. The $1.4 billion project has been in the works for over a decade. The festivities started yesterday when Equinox Gold leadership ended a cycling trip from Vancouver to the cheers of hundreds of Greenstone community members. Today's ribbon cutting featured speeches from leaders of the municipality and nearby First Nations. MP Patty Haidu and Ontario Mines Minister George Peary also shared how excited they are for this new chapter in Greenstone's history. And the community said goodbye to a longtime fixture of the community. Eric Lamontang, the former general manager of the mine, devoted 12 years to the project's planning and construction. Justin Hardy was at the event today and will bring us the full story on tomorrow's news hour. Volunteer Pool on Martha Street has been temporarily closed after an act of vandalism yesterday evening that's made the indoor pool unsafe to use. Pool staff found the glass of the large patio door at the back of the building shattered this morning when they did their regular opening checks. Volunteer Pool Program Supervisor Callie Graham says it appears someone threw a rock through the doors yesterday evening, sending shards of broken glass into the pool area. Pool staff don't believe it was a break and enter. The alarm wasn't activated as it would have been if the culprit had entered the building. This is a really unfortunate incident and it's really disheartening and, you know, saddening when something like this happens because it doesn't only affect our staff and the members of the facility, but, you know, really everyone in the com community when something like this happens. So we're hoping that, you know, it doesn't happen again and uh, we can reopen the pool uh, as quickly as possible. Graham says broken glass is one of the big worries when it comes to pools. And because it went into the water, staff now have to drain the pool, properly clean it, refill it, and ensure the proper pH balance again. They hope the pool will be back up and running again next week and plan to reopen the facility on Wednesday. Dryden OPP are investigating a fatal collision on Highway 17 early this morning involving a car and a transport truck. It happened around 2 a.m., about halfway between Dryden and Vermilion Bay. The driver of the car, a 52-year-old man from Dryden, was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the transport wasn't hurt. The TransCanada was completely closed while the OPP Collision Reconstruction Unit investigated. There's no word yet if any charges will be laid. The highway reopened around 11 o'clock this morning. Some major changes are set to take effect here in Ontario classrooms next week when students return to school. The province announced earlier this year that it's banning cell phones in class with few exceptions. CTV Siobhan Morris reports. They thought and thought. It's story time at this Caledon school where the new year is already underway. No sign of any distractions from cell phones with a ban coming into place. That approach will stretch across the province when the first bell rings for most students next week. For students in kindergarten to grade six, we are banning cell phones for the full instructional day. Kids in grades seven through 12 will be required to turn off their mobile devices or set them to silent mode and keep them out of view when they're in the classroom. There are exceptions for special education or if a teacher approves phone use for a lesson. Some teachers are reluctant to confiscate pricey phones or to send kids to the office. Enforcement is going to, to be a, a big issue um, and we want to ensure that, I want teachers to know this is, a, this is a new initiative. This is a culture change that's happening in our classrooms. Dunlop insists she'll back teachers up, but with some school board policies not ready, there are unanswered questions. What happens if it's dropped, lost, broken, if there's accusations of something? Minister said that she has their backs, but I, I think that remains to be seen. There are changes coming to learning for teenagers this school year. Students will be required to take a grade 9 or 10 tech credit to graduate. Two experiential business studies courses are being added. And in grade 10 comes mandatory learning on mental health. This will help young people recognize when they're struggling and feeling overwhelmed. And where to reach out for help. The government's making moves to protect kids' physical health, too. Explicitly banning vape devices from schools and school-related settings, along with nicotine and tobacco products. With $30 million to school boards to install vape detectors in spaces like bathrooms. 
Despite a government focus on the cell phone ban, the OSSTF president says classroom distraction is far from the biggest concern. Unqualified people working in our schools about the teacher shortage, that I was talking about violence and how to address that in the schools. I wish that we were talking about the overheated classrooms. Beginning her first school year as Minister of Education, Dunlop says she's committed to working with educators, parents and students to make sure this story has a happy ending. And that was CTV Siobhan Morris reporting. Over the last year and a half, Ontario has opened the door for more and more private clinics to perform surgeries covered by OHIP. But a new study shows that not all patients are receiving equal treatment. CTV's Heather Wright explains. Low-income patients in Ontario are being left behind. That's the conclusion of a study looking at publicly funded cataract surgeries performed at for-profit clinics. The government's new policy was designed to fit all people, you know, regardless of ability to pay. And so we wanted to you know, verify and study and see, is that really how it's playing out in the real world? Ontario is one of many provinces looking to the private sector for help in clearing long surgical wait lists. With nearly a quarter of all cataract procedures in the province now done in for-profit clinics. The study looked at nearly one million cases, along with the patient's socioeconomic status and whether their surgeries were done at a public hospital or private clinic. Researchers found 23% of people in Ontario's highest socioeconomic group used private clinics versus 14% of patients in the lowest socioeconomic group. The study's lead author says low-income patients can be deterred from using for-profit centres as patients are often asked to pay for additional services, some necessary, many not. It is just a way to buy one's way to the front of the line. 85-year-old Maureen Monroe opted to have her surgery done at a private clinic in London, Ontario, when she was told she'd have to wait two years to have it performed in hospital. I put it on a credit card. <laughs> Her bill was nearly $7,000. The ministry is reviewing her surgery to determine if it should be covered. Why am I not receiving the medical care that should be given in Ontario? The Ontario government says 18,000 people were able to get cataract surgeries last year because of this partnership, which it plans to expand. The study says more robust safeguards are needed to ensure no one is paying extra in any part of the country for provincially insured services. Heather Wright, CTV News. Thunder Bay Police are investigating a rash of thefts over the past week, two of which happened late last week on the city's south side. Venture Mechanical posted these surveillance images on Facebook after someone stole $25,000 worth of safety equipment from the company's mechanical yard on Northern Avenue. That happened last Friday around 3 o'clock in the morning. Police have been notified and the company is asking the public to help identify the thief who was wearing a red Adidas sweatshirt. City police are also looking for tips after several pieces of powwow regalia were stolen last Saturday. The regalia was in a small black suitcase that was stolen from a vehicle in the 200 block of McKellar Street South. Anyone with information is asked to contact city police or Crime Stoppers. A local driving range is hoping city police will arrest whoever has been stealing their golf balls during the night. Staff at the Swingers Driving Range estimate they've had thousands of golf balls stolen over the summer. I was wondering, where are all our balls? Are people stealing? Like, where's the balls? Swingers is a family-owned and operated business on Owen Drive. Groundskeeper Tanya Corbin says she was driving by last Wednesday night and saw a light at the back of the range. She and her son confronted the thief before he fled in his car, and they managed to snap a photo of the vehicle. The range owners have reported the theft to city police, who confirmed that they're investigating. Corbin says the range began the summer with 34 crates that hold 360 golf balls each. They're now down to just 20 crates, meaning they're missing more than 5,000 balls. In the beginning of Ju June, July, um, there was less, but I thought maybe there was more balls stuck in the ground or more in the bush that I wasn't getting, and I didn't really put it together until we caught that guy. Yeah, the guy that I caught said that his friend told him about it. Oh. So it could be, I have no idea. Corbin says they'll be adding lights and security cameras to prevent future thefts. With less than a week left until the start of the school year, Lakehead University held its move-in day today. 
For many incoming students, this is the start of a new chapter in their lives. Joel Mendelson reports. Although it's the start of the school year, it's more exciting than that for university students arriving in Thunder Bay. Many of them are moving away from home to begin a new stage of their lives with endless possibilities. You know, leaving their town for the very first time and it's, you know, it's an exciting time. They're about to go into their different programs. They're basically about to start their life. And, uh, you know, we have students coming from, I said, like all over the world. A lot of students from the Toronto area. They're all coming to Thunder Bay today, uh, moving in. It's a fresh start. It's, it's exciting. You're going to meet new friends. You're going to get involved in new programs. I think moving day is a really good opportunity for fresh starts for everyone, whether you're um, someone who's coming back or someone coming here for the first time, you can kind of choose who you want to be and craft your identity. And it's really exciting for us to be able to support that and nurture new students trying to like, better themselves and um, start their new adventure. One of the many challenges of move-in day is getting situated on campus. This is why a lot of older students volunteer to help show the first years around and help them find their dorms. Uh, we basically support all the new first year students coming in and the returning students to residence. We move them into their units, get them settled and answer any questions that they have. If they have any questions about where they're living or um, anything kind of related to their new life here at Lakehead. I wanted to come to a smaller place so I could uh, meet people and uh, be with nature. And uh, People are so polite and helpful and, you know, joyful and very nice. In terms of housing? The university is dealing with much higher demand than in past years. Approximately 40 students who paid for residence are still on the wait list, though university officials estimate they will all find somewhere to live by mid-September. In order to remedy this situation for the future, Lakehead has partnered with Spaces Shared, a company that aims to house students with homeowners in the community. Spaces Shared is a, a, um, an organization that we're working with. Um, they're a, a, a company that will help match uh, both the, the house owner as well as with the prospective student and they will try and find a good match. And it's, it's a great program. A number of uh, other campuses across uh, Ontario and across Canada use it, and we're really excited about being partnering with them. In order to accommodate the increased demand for housing, Lakehead University has repurposed two buildings, turning them into housing, resulting in 65 additional beds. Joel Mendelson, TBT News. The jackpot for the Thunder Bay 50-50 draw surpassed a major milestone today. The winner of tomorrow's draw will take home more than $2 million. This was the moment when the jackpot crossed into record-breaking territory just after 1.30 this afternoon. Officials with the Regional Health Sciences Foundation confirmed this is the largest grand prize yet for a non-Christmas 50-50 draw. They're attributing the strong ticket sales to the Dog Days of Summer theme for August, where people can submit photos of their dogs. They also had more early bird draws, with bigger daily prizes being given out in August. Ticket sales close at midnight, with the big winner being announced tomorrow. It is amazing how this just keeps growing, growing and, and growing. growing. I know. Two million dollars now on a seemingly a random August. Well, I was just going to say that. It's not Christmas. <laughs> it's not really, I feel like even February sometimes it picks yeah. up a bit. But yeah, no, yeah. this is, I'm excited. Pretty wild. If I don't show uh, up at work, you can know where I am. I, I was just going to yeah, say. It, exactly. Yeah. Well, Fiona, not exactly feeling like the dog days of summer anymore, although it was a little warmer today than it was yesterday. We're inching our way up, literally, degree by degree. We didn't get quite as warm as we were hoping, but we did return to the 20 degree mark. And uh, there was a humidex of 24 under mostly cloudy skies. Winds were coming this time instead of the east-northeast yesterday. Today it was the east-southeast and once again 15 to about 37 kilometers per hour. Now across the region we've got clouds to the west. Temperatures actually starting to fall back a little bit this afternoon. They're currently at 18 in Fort Francis, Kenora, Red Lake, loads of cloud cover. It actually warms up a little bit as you head further east. Now, Greenstone had lots of sunshine earlier today and actually topped out with a high of 21 at this hour. They're at 19, as is Marathon, Upsla, Armstrong, Nipigon, and Wawa, all sitting at 18 Celsius. And Sault Ste. Marie, well, they are mostly cloudy, but 21 and a humidex of 25 in the last hour or so. So the heat is definitely a little bit to the east. Now for tonight we'll drop down to a low of 
13 and we are looking at showers and a possible thunderstorm to move in again late in the evening and continue overnight. For all intents and purposes, it should be done by morning. So we'll start out a little bit gusty up to 40 kilometers per hour. It'll taper off overnight. And then tomorrow, well, it's kind of the start of the long weekend for a lot of folks. And we are looking at a fairly good weekend, fairly seasonal, slight possibility of rain. But all in all, uh, it's not a bad start to September. Okay, a lot of people will like to hear that. Thanks a lot, Fiona. All right, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is throwing his political weight around today. He is urging the NDP to end its agreement with the Liberals that keeps the Trudeau government in power through 2025. Of course, it doesn't seem like the NDP is willing to oblige. We'll have full details on that when your Thursday news hour continues right after the break. Break the costly coalition with Trudeau to trigger a carbon tax election.